how to buy houses with credit cards, the right way to buy houses with credit cards that we're talking about today, guys. I'm also gonna give you a couple ideas of things to avoid in real estate investing business that you should not be using credit cards for because it can get you in trouble quickly. So right here are six different strategies that I've used successfully, credit cards in my business, that I think you guys should be doing too. And then I'm gonna break these down step by step and kind of give you a high level view of how this would work. Because when you get credit cards, you're not getting a $500,000 line. Most of the time people are getting 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, maybe 70, 80, sometimes up to $100,000 across all their credit cards. So these are small balances. So how do you use them effectively and efficiently? And here's some of the ways that I do this. Number one, a gap funding situation. So there's another video on my channel all about gap funding. It breaks us down in detail. But essentially what the gap is, is the difference in funding that your front end, position, front end position lender does not cover. So in this example, the project is 132,000. Let's say it's a fix and flip project, but you have only $120,000 being lent to you by your first lender, your private lender, or your hard money lender. So for example, let's say the house to purchase was $80,000 all the other costs, carrying, closing, uh, repair costs combined, brought the project up another $52,000 to make it $132,000 total, all in project costs. But they're only gonna lend $120,000. There's a $12,000 gap difference that you have to fund out of pocket with cash out of pocket. Now, if you know this and you're analyzing these numbers ahead of time, you have the house under active option contract, you quickly realize I don't have $12,000 to finish this project. And a lot of times, it's gonna be more than this, guys, when you're analyzing, so leave a buffer with how much money you have to finish these projects, because this is how a lot of people get hurt flipping houses, is they think they're only gonna need 120,000, they need 132 or 140, and they can't finish the house, and it sits and carrying costs pick up, and then they have to let the house go uh, back to the lender. Now, let's say that it, it is only 12,000. You can take one of those credit cards that you have and use this to pay the repairs on the property or pay the contractors, however you're gonna do it, but this is a great way to utilize credit cards with those small balances of 20, 30,000. So let's say you had $36,000 and you had three projects with a $12,000 gap. If you didn't have cash out of pocket 36,000, this is three transactions that you could be doing that you wouldn't have been able to do otherwise. So funding a gap is a great way to use credit cards. Number two, a short to close. This means you do not have the capital or cash prepared ahead of time to close on a contract or close on a transaction. Many of you guys are nodding right now that one of your first transactions or even now, you show up to closing and you had uh, missed some numbers and you didn't realize it was going to be as much as it was until you got right up close to closing. You have to close because you're out of option period and you wanna close and now you're short to close maybe 6,200, maybe even 3,200, maybe even just $1,100. I've seen this happen before in my own business where I was short just a little bit because I was waiting for some other houses to close and I was what was called over leveraged. Do not over leverage yourself right now at the top of market. So let's say I had $6,200 left to close, whip out one of those credit cards, get that cash off it, go close that deal and get some money. Number two, a rental transition. So this happens all the time with landlords, guys. I get it, you're focused on scaling your business, but you need to protect your current business, especially at the top of the market. You guys see what's happening in the crazy world right now with the stock market. What happens if people start losing their jobs and they can't start making payments? You need to have cash reserves on the side or credit cards that you can touch into. Let's say you have 10 houses and you're used to only having X amount go vacant a year or whatever it is. You're tracking your own business. Now because the market gets crazy, more than what usually happens, uh, you have four people go vacant as, as compared to two. Let's just say that it's past the norm and you're not prepared to handle this. What's gonna happen when they can't make the payment and you have this transition period where you're getting them out of the property, you're stabilizing the property, meaning you're painting it, you're putting carpet in, you're doing the fixes, and you have to pay that mortgage payment underneath, this could easily be three, five, seven, eight, nine thousand dollars and that is a great way to pull a credit card out and use those credit cards to cover the rental transition period before you get that property back up and stabilize and have cash coming back in. OFDP, what does this stand for? Some of you guys who are smart and do this all the time are saying, I know what that is. That's the owner financing down payment. A lot of times people think of owner financing as a strategy where they only exit the deal. What about the acquisition side? Let's say I get a really good deal from a homeowner that they're willing to sell me the house for $7,000 down, $10,000 down, and I already know a buyer in the back end or I already know I can sell this for $15,000 down and a much bigger price point at a higher interest rate. And all I need to do is be able to get in that deal, close on it, and then sell it again and wrap it. 
this owner financing down payment or the amount of money to get into that transaction that's seven thousand dollars down could be pulled off on those small credit card uh, balances and you can use that to close on this transaction it's a great way to, uh, to do the business and then once you turn around and you sell it you should sell it at a higher down payment than that you use to get into it so you wash out that cost money goes back on the card cycle back into another deal and you actually should have a profit spread between the down payments as well as now you have an owner finance wrap higher interest rate higher sales price big spread in the middle big cash flow for you and your business now similar to that you have a sub two a lot of people out there say just go get the deed that is not how it works if anybody on here has ever done a, a subject two deal tell me was it just go get a free house not likely very unlikely that this happens hardly ever do i see someone just go get a free house where they're just like go get the deed it's going to be a free way to get into a property where you don't have to bring any money to the table guys not likely most of the time when you're taking a house over sub two it's because they're in foreclosure or they're behind on payments and they've racked up a little bit that they have to pay down just to catch up their payments that's why when you see all these videos out there saying how to negotiate how to catch up their payments somebody's got to bring that loan current they don't have the money to do so which is why they're letting you come over and basically start making their payments going going forward for them so most typical sub two deals that i see are on a low side five to seven thousand but a lot of times people are uh, putting up to twenty thousand dollars to take over these transactions now what if you have a zero percent interest credit card for twenty thousand dollars for 18 months and you need thirteen thousand dollars to take over so you put up the $13,000, let's say that property cash flow is $300 a month, that's $3,600 a year, plus another half, you're getting about $5,000 back, so you have about $8,000 left on the card, then you can do a balance transfer to a new card, so start thinking of how to do balance transfers from cards to cards as the 0% interest periods run out. This is a great way to cycle cash across these cards, and a lot of these companies, as long as you're performing well, will give you a special bonus periods where they will give you these balance transfers at 0%. So you keep doing this guys, you keep cycling your money around and you can use money for very, very low cost if you do this correctly. So that is a great way to take down properties, use cash flow to pay them down and then cycle the remaining balance off and you can get into a few properties a year doing this, especially right now with the market type. A lot of sub two deals are coming on the market, but watch our other videos. Now the last one right here is the Burr Short. What happens all the time guys is you think that you're going to fix the house up, go back to the bank and finance all your money out, plus put some money in your pocket and put that money in your pocket tax-free. So let's say your all-in amount to the project was 120,000, you thought you were gonna get 130,000 back, meaning you're gonna put $10,000 in your pocket tax-free, but what happens if the bank says, we're gonna be a little bit more conservative, we don't agree with your numbers, it's only 116,000, and you need 4,000 to come to closing that you're expecting to get 10,000, happens all the time in real estate. What you're gonna do, pull that card out, and you pay the difference, and you get that deal done. So these are just a couple ways to think about how you can utilize these small 20, 30, dollars balances. I'll probably put a couple other uh, credit card videos out here, guys, on the best ways to uh, use these as far as you know, understanding which cards to have, how to do transfers, and making sure you do this correctly because don't get yourself in trouble like I'm talking about right here. So this is how people get themselves in trouble. If you like this video so far, guys, I appreciate it if you hit the like button. It helps the channel, uh, helps the uh, video get more views. But this is where I got in trouble. Some of the things I do not want you to use your cards for, Number one, obviously the mall, that's a joke, but not really joking. I've seen people get credit cards for their business and go spend it on food, go spend it on the mall. I know a guy that bought a personal pool for his own personal house that had nothing to do with an investment. These cards are for your business, guys. They're not for you to go live your life to keep up with the Joneses and make sure your girlfriend doesn't think you're broke so you can take them out at night and pretend that you got money, right? Now, the big one is marketing. These up here, all these things, options on the board behind me are leveraged positions off an equity position on an actual real estate deal that has potential of making you money. You're already knowing the deal has pretty good numbers. You're leveraging into that deal using the credit cards to complete the deal. These are what you should be doing. This is where I see people get hurt is they spend their credit cards on marketing. They don't know what they're doing, just like I didn't, and I started dropping $5,000, $10,000 direct mail campaigns because some fake guru sold me a course and told me this is what to do. I used some crap course information, some bad marketing pieces, and I put it out there because I was told to do it, and guess what? I got myself where I was $60,000 plus in debt very, very quickly. And it's not that you're just $60,000 plus in debt, that you owe the $60,000 plus thousand back, once those 0% interest periods roll over, guys, you have interest kicking in. So you owe a lot more back than what you wrote, uh, uh, kind of put on the cards. So do not be spending these credit cards on marketing. This is the number one way I see people get in trouble, guys. Be safe out there. 
use the credit cards correctly, use it to leverage into assets, not on marketing because that's how you're going to get in trouble because there's an unknown uh, result when you put that money in the marketplace. You don't know if you're getting a deal or not. Other than that, guys, hope you liked the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. I'll see you on the next one. Have a good day.